Okay, so welcome to the Harmonic Distortion of Drives, Issues and Solutions seminar. Um, before we start, I would like to give you a quick overview of how Refcon operates. We have partners worldwide, so we have partners in North America, South America, and some other places, and we have a subsidiary in Singapore, and obviously the headquarter in the middle of Germany. So that's our situation at the moment. We are about 50 uh, employees at the moment. Um, yeah, that's our situation and our sales channels. So looking at the agenda, I want to start with some basic to make sure we get everyone on board on the harmonics and on the basics to make sure that when we look deeper into certain designs of passive or active filter, that we understand the differences of the different technologies. Okay, so first of all, the simple question, what is a harmonic? First of all, I want to show you a quick overview of what kind of power quality issues do we have or typical power quality issues do we face uh, worldwide. And we have the reactive current, which is um, what you would typically see when you connect a motor direct online. As this will take a reactive current, you would always see some kind of uh, displacement between current and voltage. We have voltage unbalance if you have an unsymmetrical loaded system. We have transients, which is typically a single or a periodical event on the main supply. So when you turn on something very strong or maybe for some other reasons, you may have transients. And we have the harmonic distortion, which is the topic of today. Basically means that voltage and current are not in shape, in not of the same shape. So to give you a quick overview, let's look at the input current of some different setups. So the first picture on the left side is an input current of a quite small, um, not quite small, a quite cheap drive, um, means a drive with a very small inductance inside. So this is the typical input current of a six pulse rectifier with a very small inductance inside. Then we have the typical waveform of a quality drive, which would be around 35% THDI, which is typically made with a 4% inductance inside. As you can see, the second picture is still far away from a sine wave, but it's a lot better than the first picture. And on the third picture, we will see overlapping currents of single phase load and three phase load which result in a mix of nonlinear loads, adding up the third harmonic and further on. Okay, but first of all, we need to understand what is a harmonic. So basically we look, or when we have AC current, we expect a sinusoidal current, of course, but in fact, the truth is typically different. So we can look at any current waveform and decompose this signal into individual frequencies. So sometimes it's easier to understand if we look at it the other way around. So looking at the second picture or the picture in the middle, we have the fundamental frequency and we have the third harmonic. The third harmonic is just three times the frequency of the fundamental frequency. So far, so simple. So if we add up these frequencies, we get a composed signal. So this is what we get when we add up fundamental and third harmonic. So if we add up the third harmonic and the fifth harmonic, then we get something looking like this. So the basic theory behind harmonics is that any signal no matter how it looks, can be decomposed into its individual frequencies. And we do that so we have a better chance to analyze the situation and to understand where are the frequencies, what kind of distortion do we have. 
So looking at harmonic frequencies, they are defined by a certain number. So when we speak about harmonics, we mean integer order or integer numbers of the fundamental frequency. Integer is a full number. Um, so one, two, three, four, five. Um, if we look at interharmonics, that would be something in between. So 2.5, 2.7, something in between the integer. Um, not a topic of today, just to mention there are interharmonics and there are harmonics. Harmonics are full numbers, integer numbers, multiples of the fundamental frequency. Simple example, 11th harmonic is the 11 times fundamental frequency. So 50 hertz, it will be 550 hertz. If it's um, 10 harmonics, then it's 500 hertz and so on. I think the principle is quite simple. Okay, to sum up, what is a harmonic? Harmonics are sine wave signals overlapping the main fundamental frequency. And every harmonic is defined by three things. The first one is harmonic order. That's the number, the integer number of the harmonic. So fifth harmonic is 250 hertz. I'm always speaking about 50 hertz, by the way, um, unless called otherwise. Then we have the harmonic amplitude. That is how strong is this signal? How strong is the amplitude of this uh, frequency? So looking at the fifth harmonic, how strong is the amplitude of the 250 Hertz signal? Um, this can typically be voltage or current. Um, a harmonic is not specifically mean for current or voltage. It's also made, it's made for, for both. And in some different, uh, Topics. It can also be made for, in, in audio, for example, it can have a completely different uh, sense. Okay, so we have the order, we have the amplitude, and we have an angle. Angle means what kind of angle do we have between the fundamental frequency and the harmonic order? What is the phase shift between those two? Um, that's really essential because harmonics, depending on their angle, may compensate each other. So a fifth harmonic um, do not necessarily have to add up to a new value. We have to look at their angle. And if they have different angles, they would compensate each other partly or completely. And that's, by the way, the main principle of an active harmonic solution, which we will talk a lot about later. Okay, so how are harmonics evaluated? I'm quite sure these values you have heard um, before. So THDI and THDV values. So these are the evaluation um, numbers to expect certain results. Um, for example, THD means total harmonic distortion and is defined typically up to 40 or 50 harmonic. And this is made for current and for voltage. So before we have a look at the equation for total harmonic distortion, I would like to give you a quick flashback to what is the IRMS. The IRMS is typically what you would measure with a standard clamp meter or anything when you measure the current in any kind of application. So. This has two parts. The first part is the fundamental part. That's the sine wave part of this input current. That's the part that is the friendly part. Then we have the harmonic part, which is an overlapping part. Um, that is the part that is causing harmonic currents. Okay, so this IRMS is altogether the fundamental and the harmonic part. When we say, or when we calculate the THDI, we want to put these two parts in a relationship to give you a value that say how good or how quality, uh, what is the quality of my input current? That's how you could interpret this. So looking at the total harmonic current, which is basically the same as the IRMS, but not including the fundamental part. So we only look at the second up to 40 or 50 harmonic right here. So this is the harmonic part. 
And to get the THDI, we divide this harmonic part by the fundamental frequency, which is the first harmonic. So in the end, we have this equation where we divide the harmonic part by the fundamental part. And this way we get the THDI, which is what we need to evaluate the harmonic distortion of a signal. So THDV um, is very much the same. It's just made by the amplitude of the voltage instead of the amplitude of the current. So that's the only difference between those two values. Um, of course, no one today would ever consider to calculate the THDI or anything by themselves. Um, but I think it's essential to understand the calculation behind in order to understand what information can I get from the THDI or THDV. Um, because I will tell you later on, this is not the whole story. So you would have a measurements and this will give you some information. So the first one would be the current shape. This is a power quality analyzer in this, uh, in this case on Xavier Anu. And this will give you some information about the current waveform. It will give you all the individual harmonic values in this example in, as a percentage, which could also be a current, it could be a voltage, could be anything. So it will give you individual values of the individual harmonics up to, I think all power quality meters today would give you up to 50 or maybe some cheaper brands up to 25. And then you will see this kind of diagram showing you where do I have harmonics. So the most typical ones are 5, 7, 11, 13. That's a typical distortion of a quality drive with an internal harmonic, um, sorry, an internal inductance inside the drive or outside the drive, doesn't matter. Okay, so that's all that I had to tell on this THDI or total demand distortion, TDD, which is a little bit similar, but not exactly. I will tell you later on more. Um, basically, both of them are two contents of the IRMS, um, the harmonic part divided by the fundamental part. And this relationship between those two gives you information about the quality of your current. And for the voltage is exactly the same, just using the voltage amplitude instead of the current amplitude. Okay, so that was the basics and that's necessary to understand further parts and further problems caused by harmonics. Um, you will see in the next pages. So problems and issues. Um, THDI, that's simple, is it? Yes, but I'm afraid um, you will learn it's not everything that we need to know about harmonics. So starting with something simple, um, if we look at different drives and different drives input current, um, we should know that if we have a drive that has no input shock on it, just a simple rectifier, we will see a harmonic distortion somewhere above 100%. In this example, it's 103%, can go up to 110. It can be 95 if you're lucky. But in any case, it will be very, very high. So means the harmonic part is roughly the same as the fundamental part. Okay, that's for no inductance inside the drive. The next part would be a small inductance, a 2% inductance, which is quite small you would reach a THDI of roughly 50%. Um, in this example, this is draw, the, the shock is placed outside the drive, but the position of the drive of the shock is not that essential. It can be AC side, it can be DC side. Typically it's placed DC side because that gives you some benefits in the production and you can use a smaller shock to reach the same performance. <clears throat> Okay, so next one is 35% THD on a drive with a 4% choke. That's quite typical on the market. 4% is more or less the benchmark from 
any quality supplier on the market right now. To get further down, you can't just add up the harmonic, uh, the impedance inside the drive or the inductance inside the drive. You will have to place some kind of harmonic solution to your situation. So a passive harmonic filter would cause you a THDI of 3.5 to 10%, depending on brand, depending on the performance level you choose. I think barely all supplier offers you different performance level of their harmonic filter. So next step would be an active front end solution. Um, you will typically have a THDI of three, three to five percent. And uh, the main difference between this technology and a standard drive is the input of the drive itself. So if we look at the standard drive right here, we have a diode rectifier input. But if we look at this one, by adding a high switching frequency to the IDBT, we can define the resistance of the input, which means that we can decide how will the input current look like so we can get the sine wave shape and the input side. Um, as these units are high switching devices, typically um, in a two level design, it will switch with about um, six to eight kilohertz, somewhere in that area, depending on energy direction. Um, these need LCL filter, which are typically already inbuilt or somehow specified mandatory by the supplier. So these are three to 5%. And then we have, from a harmonic point of view, the best solution, uh, motor direct online with one to 3% THDI. So the first disadvantage of these kind of solutions or the disadvantage of the high THDI is the input current. So if we look at 103% THDI, that means your input current will be 55% higher than it had to be if you had a pure sine wave filter or pure sine wave input current. The next setup with the 2% choke, 52% THDI, would still have a higher input current of 12%. 35% THDI would still result in 7% higher IRMS compared to the clean solution, passive harmonic filter or active front end solutions. And obviously, Motors Direct Online will cause higher currents because of the reactive part they cause. They have a power factor, uh, cost phi, so they would typically at least pull 10% higher RMS from the grid, probably higher. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's not that simple. It's not about only about the THDI. Um, using the THDI as an evaluation for harmonics can give you a first quick picture of the situation, but Looking at the equation, this has one quite big problem. Um, if we look at this right here, we can see all harmonics are equal. It doesn't matter if I have a high current on the 40s harmonic or on the second one. All these harmonic are equal, but they're not because higher harmonics will cause more harm than lower order harmonics. So why do we care about harmonic currents in the first place? You could assume that if you have a drive that will create harmonic currents, this drive should be able to handle these currents. And as a matter of fact, they are. They don't suffer from the current. They can easily handle this higher input current. The diodes are perfectly sized to, to cover this. But the main problem is that our network or our infrastructure um, is not ideal supply. We have impedance over all this medium voltage, low voltage transformer, over the medium voltage level, high voltage. All these components in your infrastructure, in the energy infrastructure, have impedance. That means even if you get some clean current or clean voltage from the supply, you will always have some kind of distortion. So obviously, we don't live in an ideal world. The real supply 
um, will look like this. All these components have a really, really relevant part. So basically, when we look at Ohm's law, we can say if we have a current and we have an impedance in the system, this can be the wires, this can be the transformer, and especially as I see some from, or one at least one of you is from Ecuador, um, and I know a lot of you are from, from Chile, so in these South American countries, from as far as I am aware, you will also have quite long medium voltage impedance, um, means long distances of medium voltage. And based on that, you will see distortion also made by this impedance. So kind of a long story short, every current will cause a voltage distortion. If I have a current on 250 Hertz, on the 250 Hertz signal, and I have an impedance, which is also defined for 250 Hertz, then I get a voltage distortion on the fifth harmonics. That's how simple it is. So basically we don't really care about the harmonic current. Um, all equipment is sized, so, or at least equipment that will cause harmonics is sized to cover these harmonic currents. So the currents are not the problem. The voltage or the resulting voltage from this current is the problem. Um, because this voltage will affect all the other equipment connected to the same supply. So that is the real problem. All harmonic currents cause voltage distortion and voltage distortion affects all equipment connected. To be fair, it affects all equipment connected except for maybe a heating resistor or a very simple device. Um, for example, motors direct online will suffer, drives will suffer if you have high voltage distortion. So as I mentioned before, um, I already answered to this question, to be honest, are all harmonics equal? Um, they are definitely not. To understand this, we should have a look at this picture again. Um, if we look at the second picture, and if we measure a THDI on a drive of 35%, we could assume that this is a high quality drive. We could assume this must have a 4% choke inside. But I'm afraid it's not that simple because there are a quite new phenomenon, so-called slim DC bus drives or echo drives. Um, these are not bad guys, but basically you should be careful when using them because they have a completely different spectrum than a standard drive. So on the left side, we see the standard drive. You see this more or less normal camel back on the current shape. And on the slim DC bus drive, on the red one, you will see a completely different shape of the current. And this is caused by a different spectrum. So both of these drives will cause you a THDI of 31%, as you can see right here. But the spectrum is completely different. And looking at these diagrams, the difference doesn't seem to be so small. But in fact, this area is much more distorted on a slim DC bus drive. Um, and actually also the phase angle of the individual harmonics are also uh, different. So if you have a few slim DC bus drive, they can actually benefit your harmonic situation because they would eliminate others. But in the end, you will have to, to evaluate if you only have slim DC bus drives, um, there are two dangerous things because the most common harmonic filter or not the most common, but a simple harmonic filter would not be able to, to handle the higher order harmonics. And also these harmonics are much more dangerous or they cause a lot more harm than the lower order harmonics. So the fifth and seven. And to understand why higher order harmonics um, will cause you more harm, we can make a very long calculation and we can look at the magnetics of different parts. Um, but we can also just imagine a transformer. A transformer is designed for 50 Hertz. 
And obviously, if you put 250 hertz, which would be the fifth harmonics, this transformer would still be able to deliver a quite big part of this to the next medium voltage level. So a small problem because a small part will be transmitted into heat, but not a huge problem. That's for fifth harmonic. For the seventh, it's a little bit worse. For the 11, it's a little bit worse. 13, a little bit worse. But if you go up to the higher order harmonics, so looking at the 37, just as an example, um, this will be what, 1950 hertz, for example. Um, that would be 37, uh, 1850. So looking at this frequency, the transformer will not be able to transmit anything from this frequency to the next level. So we need to ask ourselves, where does this energy go? This energy is completely transmitted into heat inside the transformer. And first of all, that's a waste of energy because all these harmonics um, is, is energy. Um, but more of a problem is that your transformer may overheat and see problems. So even though it's not loaded quite significantly, all this energy from this signal will not be transmitted. So you will heat it up quite quickly. So that's the main problem of why, or the main uh, reason why transformer heat up by harmonics. They are not able to transmit all of the harmonics. So some people say, yes, um, a voltage or a transformer don't transmit the harmonics to the next level. That's only partly true because transformer can transmit harmonics and 5, 7, 11, 13, you will see them on the medium voltage side. There will be less, but they're not solved. And a part of them is transmitted into heat. So transformer are not the solution to solve harmonics or even to separate with a transformer is not the reason or not the, not the way to deal with harmonics. Okay. So I hope that was clear. And uh, that is basically the background of why high harmonics uh, you should keep a good eye on. And of course, the standards know about this. So the IEEE 519, for example, will give you individual values for individual harmonics, individual harmonic orders, and they will limit the total demand distortion, which I still will come back to later. This is just to show you that all these standards, and this is not only for the IEEE, it's the IEC will have different ways to handle this and may have some different limits, but in the end, they all specify the individual harmonics and the individual limits for certain frequencies. So as you can see for the 11 or below 11, they allow you to have a lot more harmonics than they allow you to have for the second, uh, for 11 to 17 and so on. So are all harmonics equal? No, they will cause more harm when they are uh, higher order. So that's just to explain why the THDI is useful, but it don't give you a full picture of the situation because you don't see the spectrum behind the THDI if you only look at the THDI. Unless you really know, okay, I know the spectrum of this drive, I know this is a, a CG drive and I know exactly the spectrum of, of what it calls. So then you can, estimate uh, countermeasurements against these harmonics because you know the spectrum. But otherwise, if you are in an unknown situation, you don't know anything about the load, the THDI is only your first picture. Okay, so what kind of problems uh, do we have caused by harmonics, basically? Um, voltage distortion cause power loss. That's a fact and you can actually read this in some um, official documents. Um, I saw a Danfoss seminar two days ago and they refer to the IEEE saying that 8% THDV on a motor um, for a motor direct online it can only run up to 85% load. That means if you have a high distortion and that's actually the limit that you will have on the IEEE um, if you really go to that limit, you cannot run your motor on a full load anymore. It can only run 85% load. And I think that's quite, 
quite a warning to understand about harmonics. Um, the guys from the test field downstairs, they gave me some pictures of a distortion on a drive. To explain what these pictures are, I need to explain. These are both motors. They run 18.5 kilowatt load direct online. And they were used at, first they were used at the THDV, uh, total harmonic distortion of the voltage of 6.8%. To get these bad values, we actually had to use an active filter and we have to manipulate the active filter to create harmonics on the network and not to solve harmonics. Um, that's quite easy, but that's what we do when we try to reduce our power quality. Quite unusual, but that's how we did this test. So we tested this drive and let it run for, I think, two hours to get it saturized. And as you can see on the picture, there is roughly um, five to 10 degrees difference in these two motors, just by changing the voltage distortion. And this doesn't give you a qualified picture of everything or every problem related to harmonics, but you can see on this that even though um, you have a standard drive, it's a standard motor, no drive, a motor direct online will suffer quite significant from harmonic distortions. Okay, so what other loads and what other problems do we see? I think I mentioned before transformers. They not only suffer from high harmonics, they suffer from all harmonics. But in particular, the high harmonics are locked into the transformer and will heat up the transformer or the oil or whatever is installed inside the transformer. So. That's one reason to keep an eye on this. And of course, even though the transformer is not overloaded, um, this will significantly reduce the lifetime of this transformer. So it, it's basically the same for power factor correction. So uh, a capacitor direct online would always take the current uh, that is the shape of the voltage. So if you have this shape on the voltage, then the power factor will just pull the same current and you will see a ripple on your power factor correction on your capacitor and uh, that will reduce the lifetime of the capacitor quite significant so as a result you have to oversize this kind of equipments or you have to or looking at the pfc you would have to replace it earlier than you should need to and another one is the reduced lifetime of electronical equipment um, looking at electronical equipment, all have some kind of input rectifier and some kind of capacitor in the front because they are DC supplied somewhere internally. So when we look at these capacitors, this capacitor will see the full DC bus ripple of the voltage if we have higher harmonics. So it it's not the damage, immediate damage typically. It's more like a damage that will damage your equipment over the time. So if you see your PCs or computer or whatever electronical equipment you have, maybe dying after 12 months, after six months, um, it's not always due to bad quality. It can be the power quality that just makes your equipment suffer. And I think, um, I've never been to Ecuador, but I expect it to be quite hot in many places. Um, if you have ambient temperature that is quite close to the nominal rating of the equipment, then you are in a quite fast, you can get in, this, in the area where you overload the equipment and all, everything gets damaged sooner than it should be. So keep in mind, any electronical equipment will have lower lifetime. It doesn't have to be an immediate damage. Um, there are plants where you can see immediate damage if you have above 8% voltage distortion you can quite easily see fast damage on your equipment. Um, yes, motors and generators direct online, uncontrolled. Um, they have always increased losses, which will reduce lifetime expectation. Um, they can have reduced torque and unsteady torque. And I think that's one of the main underestimated problems by harmonics looking at um, motors because any motor direct online 
they will try to follow the frequency of 50 or 60 hertz, um, depending on how many how many pole parts you have connected. But in any way, they will try to follow the frequency. So if we now have on the same voltage, we add up a frequency of 250 hertz, the motor will try to follow this frequency and it can at to a certain level. So it doesn't mean that it will not see this um, see this voltage. It can see the voltage and it will cause a magnetic field. And this magnetic field will cause vibrations on the shaft. And these vibrations will damage the bearings soon, very soon. So I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of mechanical engineers out there that are very smart, but I would guess that none of them when they see damaged bearing, they don't say, ah, oh, that's a harmonic problem. They will just assume, oh, that's bad quality, uh, Chinese product or, or whatever, or maybe earth leakage current, but they would never get to the point where they say, yeah, this is definitely a harmonic problem. So this problem is, in my opinion, very underestimated and it's really hard to detect. Okay. Um, on long term, we will create some white papers on this to evaluate at which level will the motor see the vibration. But I would expect that anything about 5% should be avoided, voltage distortion. Okay, and at the end, um, any equipment connected to high voltage distortion will cause higher power loss. So the other way around, your system efficiency will be improved if you have a better situation, if you have a better voltage distortion situation. So that's lead to higher cost in the end. Okay, to summarize what damage is caused by harmonics, we have lower lifetime, we have electrical and mechanical damage, and of course the main main problem, less efficiency of the whole system. Okay, so the next part is a little bit um, more intense, the IEEE and the impact of the short circuit current ratio. Um, the question you always ask yourself when we speak about harmonics is, do I need harmonic mitigation? When you do a big drive, do I need harmonic mitigation? Um, this morning I made a seminar for, for Asia and they always put harmonic mitigation on today, at least for the HVAC projects. Um, but I think in the most other parts of the world, harmonic mitigation is a decision to be made and it depends on some quite relevant factors. So first of all, we need to understand what is the background or what is the effect that we have when we put on a drive on the main supply. So in this simplified example, we have one drive connected to two different generators. The first one is 100 kVA and the second one is 200 kVA. So double up the size and very likely double up the short circuit current. Um, so if we look at the first example, if we connect this setup to a 100 kVA generator, we will have a THDI of 33%. And that will result in a THDV of 3%. So means the current is 33% and that will have a distortion on the voltage and let it go up to 3%. If we take the same drive, the same load, the same motor connected to a stronger generator, 200 kVA, that will lead to a higher THDI but the resulting THDV, the resulting voltage distortion, will be only 2.5%. So the stronger your network is, the less voltage distortion you will have. So basically all standards and recommendations will give you some limits and they will give you some, or some of them will give you some practice advice. So this is a quick overview. Um, we don't have to go deep into this one because I think in America, the most common one used is the IEEE 519. And also in Asia, in Germany, we use more or less all of them, all the other ones. Um, 
quite annoying, but the standard IEEE gives you a limit of 8%, which is a very high limit. But if we look at the tables um, used inside the IEEE, they give you some recommendation on, um, we can switch to the next page. They give you some recommendation on currents that you should have when you make an installation. So let's make an example. If we have an installation where we have a short circuit current of uh, or short circuit current ratio of 20 to 50, they tell you to have a total demand distortion, a, volt, uh, a current distortion of less than 8%, including all the individual values. If we follow this standard and this recommendation, we will not get to the limit of 8%, we will get far below 5%. So actually, that's why I mentioned it differently. The limit of the IEEE 519 is 8%, but they practice or they target a 5% limit. So um, it's a little bit tricky to read because many people think we have an 8% limit, but if we follow the targets and the recommendation of the IEEE, our result on the main supply will be much better. So anyway, I think this is the most common used table for harmonic mitigation when we look at harmonic distortion. So for now, I want to explain what is the difference between TDD and THDI. And looking at the short circuit current ratio, we will do that later. But for now, we focus on the TDD and THDI. Okay, so this is the equation for the TDD. Um, I'm not sure if you have the THDI equation still in mind, but this part up here is exactly the same. And this part down here was E1, the fundamental frequency. Um, basically, and that's a common main mistake, the EL, the load, E load, is not to be, um, is not equal to the IRMS current. So that's a quite common made mistake when you speak about TDD. This is still the fundamental part. It's still the 50 or 60 Hertz signal of the, of the IRMS. But this is defined as the fundamental frequency amplitude, defined as the maximum demand during 12 months. Um, this is the full definition of this current, but basically it means it is the maximum value that has been seen during the last 12 months divided by 12. So the average of the last 12 months. Um, and that gives you always, no matter which operating point you are, this will always give you a high value down here, which means that your TDD value will be smaller. So if we look at the full load, the TDD and THDI, full load means the highest value, then we can assume that these two values are the same. And that's a good thing because we should always focus on the maximum power when we speak about THDI. We should not get tricked by someone saying that you should have maybe below 5% at 8% load. That's really nonsense because you don't need that. And I think the IEEE take that into account and makes it a really user-friendly way to handle the harmonics. Um, just to explain what I mean, um, looking at the THD, um, or first of all, I need to explain this picture. So on the X axis, we see the motor load and on the Y axis, we can see the THDI, the orange one, and the blue one is the TDD. So if we face these two different equations, these are the same measurements, but different equations used, we get different results. And this is because the TDD always use the maximum current in their equation. So for a non-experienced user looking at the THDI, they will look up here and say, oh, that's, that's tricky and that's too high and I'm worried about the current up here. And they don't need to be worried because we still have 3% or 8% harmonic distortion, which is higher than up here, but still the input current is only 80% or 18% in this example or the motor load is only 80 percent so we are speaking about eight percent of 18 percent and here we are speaking about three percent of 120 percent so you always need to check what is the biggest value 
So looking at the TDD, you already have that included. So you can automatically see, okay, this is the worst case, 120%. That's what I need to um, care about. So TDD is really user-friendly. I think it has been approved by 150 engineers from IEEE. I think we can really trust on their recommendations um, as this is really good from my view. Okay. So what kind of harmonics solutions are useful? I think I missed one page right now. Okay, somehow these pictures are not into it. Just give me a quick second to solve this. Okay, so if we go back to the table, to this one. On the left side, we will see the short circuit current divided by the load current. And this will give you uh, information about the strength of your network. So EL, we already defined that's the load current, the fundamental part of the load current. But this part, the short circuit current, that can be the tricky one to find. So in order to define if I need harmonic mitigation, if I need 20%, 5%, 8, 12, 15, and so on, first of all, I need to define what kind of relationship do I have between short circuit current and load current. And that can be a very tricky point. So first of all, to calculate this, we can use the calculation from the IEC, which is short circuit power divided by equipment power. This is roughly the same as short circuit current divided by load current. It's not exactly the same, but as a quick estimation, it can definitely be used. Okay, so this is the full calculation that you would need. You would need the medium voltage impedance, you would need a transformer impedance, the voltage impedance, and then you just hit it into the calculation and very easy, you will get the result. But even if you have this equation right with you, to get these values, it's more or less impossible. Um, at least from my experience, you will never get this information from the customer because if the customer knows, he might know his medium voltage, uh, his low voltage uh, values, he can know the length and maybe he knows what kind of material is used and then you can calculate. But then you get to the transformer and that's already tricky to get the good transformer values. And when you get to the medium voltage impedance, um, you normally don't get anything, at least not from the customer. You can get some information from the energy supplier. Um, kind of a long story short, to get these values is not, not really reasonable, not really possible. So what you can do is you can make a simplified calculation. Um, if you assume that your medium voltage impedance is not very relevant, which you should be careful about, especially in, in South America, because I know they have very long medium voltage distances, um, you can still take the transformer information um, using this equation to get the same ratio or to get the short circuit power of the transformer. And you could assume that this is the most relevant part and then you can create the relationship with this part only. It's an estimation. So if you have long voltage, uh, low voltage impedance values, if you have long wires, um, then you should consider these um, and you should try to get at least these values and calculate further. But I know it can be really tricky to get this information. Um, however, if you ever get in the situation where you have these values, but you don't know exactly how to calculate the short circuit impedance, send the values to us, we will calculate and we will tell you what is your short circuit power ratio, you need harmonic mitigation, or if you don't need it, we will tell you you don't need to add anything. So I think we are quite fair in that area. So that's something that we will always offer. Or you could just, you will get this presentation, so you could give it a try first. Mm -hmm and you could get us to confirm the values that you have calculated. Maybe that's another option. OK. 
Okay. I will not go through that calculation more detailed um, because the first question you will ask yourself is when you make an installation, can I get some kind of roll of thumb? Can I estimate, okay, this could be harmonic problems or this could be good. Um, yes, I've set up some tables that might be useful for you. I just need to take one coffee. Okay, so if you have a transformer and it's loaded below 30%, you have linear loads no matter how much. It could be zero to 100%. So even if your 30% of this transformer is with drives, you will not need harmonic mitigation. You're safe. If your transformer load is 30% to 90% and your nonlinear loads means drive power or other nonlinear equipment, LED driver or whatever, you will not need harmonic mitigation. If your load is in the same area, 30 to 90%, but you have nonlinear load of 10 to 100%, you should use the table of the IEEE 519 2014 and check what kind of harmonic mitigation you will need. Um, it's really essential to do the calculations on, the, on, the, on this table. Because if we look here, if you only have 10% load, you might only need a filter on maybe one drive or two drives. But if you always assume this worst case, if you don't get any values, you could always say, okay, I will make it worst case and I will assume 5% TDD. But that will cost you um, a lot of money and that will make your offer maybe not comparable or not compatible with the, with the other suppliers. So it's really essential to have, or to at least try to get these values from the customer, at least try to get um, these calculations. Okay, so that's from 30 to 90%. Anything between 10 and 100% nonlinear load, you should make the calculations. If you have more than 90% harmonic um, load on the transformer, sorry, no matter how big the drive load is, you should always make the same calculation above 90%. And if you are above 90% and you know the drive load is above 10%, just target 5% TDD. That should be, then you should be okay. Because if you are above 90%, you don't have the margin on the transformer to do anything above 5% anyway. <clears throat> 